Carlos Delgado getting his first taste of Mets Yankees here in 06 in the infinity pitching matchup for tonight's game and Randy Johnson goes for the Yankees Jeremy Gonzalez's second start for the Mets and you know on paper before the season you'd say it was the ultimate mismatch but things have not gone well for the big unit this year. He really has struggled he's had hitters 44 times in a two strike count they're hitting 318 off him in that situation which tells you that he's having a hard time putting hitters away his slider is not as sharp his fastball around the 92 93 mile an hour range and that's low for him and his swings and misses are down. Yes when you have swings and misses down that means that they are seeing your the pitches they are making contact with your pitchers and Randy Johnson was always a pitcher that he could go through an entire inning without anyone touching the ball as for Jeremy Gonzalez first start out against Milwaukee he threw strikes which is what the Mets want to see tonight well it's great that he's throwing strikes I think the key though is that he has 818 minor league innings only 500 in the big leagues and I'm sure he's never pitched with this kind of occasion so it's going to be interesting to see how he handles because there's a little more pressure on this start than there would be on any other the start. Gonzalez has faced the Yankees before as a member of the Devil Rays and last year as a member of the Red Sox, but the first time in this cauldron, Mets Yankees at Shea, and the first pitch is coming up in just a moment. Mets and Yankees getting set for the opener of this weekend series. Jeremy Gonzalez makes his second start as a Met. Here's the starting lineup for the Yankees brought to you by Nissan and your local Nissan dealers. Derek Jeter's been hitting second all year long, and he's off to a great start in 2006, hitting behind Johnny Damon. Yankees without Hideki Matsui and Gary Sheffield, so Bernie Williams gets the start in left field, Melky Cabrera in right. Like you talked about, Gary, Jeremy Gonzalez throws strikes, and what an opportunity to go out there and audition for this job they're just waiting for someone to step to the front and win that pitcher's job Johnny Damon leads off and Gonzalez's first pitch misses high and when Gonzalez came out against the Brewers in his first start last Saturday he threw almost all fastballs early in the game one and one to Damon Damon hitting at 280. Two and one from Gonzalez who's now 31 years of age pitched for the Red Sox last year and faced the Yankees four times all in relief last season. So it's not as overwhelming as it might be to another pitcher. And Damon lines one down the right field line. That's an extra base hit bounding into the corner. Damon to second he's running with a cracked bone in his foot and so he's not even going to think about a triple but he's led off the game with a double against Jeremy Gonzalez. Well ahead in the count and Gonzalez had to come in with a fastball. You say he throws a lot of fastballs Gary and he did there. And Damon hit that off the end of the bat a little bit. That's what kept it fair. And you see Damon not running 100 percent right now. In fact Joe Torre DH him yesterday to try and take a little pressure off that foot. But the Yankees are so short of outfielders. Bubba Crosby went on the disabled list today that Damon had to play and he's in there and leads off the game with a double. Here's Derek Jeter fifth in the American League and batting at 346 and he takes wide from Gonzalez. Jeter at second and nobody out so Gonzalez with an early difficulty to work himself out of. And Jeter pops one foul. reason the Mets wanted Jeremy Gonzalez rather than Jose Lima to pitch against the Yankees is because the Yankees are such a patient team at the plate. Jeter fooled one and two. Has a nice cutter slider by Jeremy Gonzalez. You see that ball running up and away away from Jeter not able to catch up to that. So with Jeter looking to at least move the runner. Gonzalez ahead of him one and two with Jason Giambi on deck. Peter wastes one away. Gary Sheffield looking on. He's at least a week to ten days away from playing with a sprained wrist. 
of course the Yankees also without Hideki Matsui who's out for at least three or four months with a broken wrist. One two to Jeter and he lines a base hit. Damon turns third he'll score without a throw and the Yankees two batters into the game of a one nothing lead. So Jeremy Gonzalez getting hurt up in the zone against Damon and Jeter. Damon's hit was up in his own. He pulled it down the right field line. This fastball trying to come in, but Jeter was so quick with the bat inside and was able to line, line drive this ball to left field. 30th run batted in for Jeter. And so the Yankees off to a quick start against Gonzalez. And here is Jason Giambi. Giambi hitting just 266 but leads the American League in on base percentage at 481. He's already drawn 40 walks this year. The Yankees today are playing their 40th game. Of all the Yankee patient hitters, he's the best. They're taking balls just off the strike zone. Jeter's running. Loduca's throw. Not in time. And Jeter has his seventh stolen base of the year. Well, the Yankees have come to play. Jeremy Gonzalez takes a long time to deliver the ball to the base. No chance for Latuka, even with a pretty good throw, to get Jeter. Well, the Yankees coming out very aggressively at the plate and on the bases against Gonzalez. Still nobody out. They have a run in, and Jeter in scoring position for Giambi. And Gonzalez continues to miss high. They're the individual on base percentage leaders in the American League and the Yankees as a team have a 371 on base percentage and that's the best in the majors. Well Gary you know when you're up in the strike zone it's because you're overthrowing and why are you overthrowing because you're a little nervous. That's what happens to pitchers in the first inning. Giambi takes inside two and one. And there's what we were talking about with the Yankees leading as a team in on base percentage. And Giambi's just not going to help you out by going out of the strike zone. It's three and one. Oh, well, Damon scoring. The Yankees have now scored 27 more runs than the Mets in one less game. Willie Randolph hoping that Gonzalez can settle down here and find himself early and not put the Mets in a big hole the way Jose Lima did yesterday in St. Louis. And that's a strike to Giambi. Alfonso Marquez, the home plate umpire. And Giambi questioning the call. Giambi's gotten himself to such a point with his ability to know balls and strikes that umpires almost know that he knows whether it's a balls or strikes. That ball looked in. It's like ball four from here. 3-2 to Giambi and it's too high. And so the first three hitters have all reached against Jeremy Gonzalez. Well, the four defense you can see the same lineup as usual all the way around except for Jose Valentin playing left tonight instead of Cliff Floyd. So still nobody out and here's Alex Rodriguez. A Rod last year's American League MVP for the second time. And he takes a strike from Gonzalez. A Rod is just one for 12 in his career against Jeremy Gonzalez. I don't think he's one for 12 against anyone and Gonzalez a lot of those fastballs you think that A Rod would be hitting better than that but. Hit over third. That's a fair ball going down the line. Jeter will score easily. Giambi racing for third. Valentin's throw goes to second, which was unguarded. Matsui comes back, makes the tag. Matsui had committed going toward the left field line to be an extra cutoff man, had to retreat to the bag and got there in time to make the acrobatic tag on A Rod for the first out of the game. Well, another pitch up in the strike zone. A Rod hammers this down the line. 
Valentin does a good job of getting to it and throwing it into second base. Matsui gets back to the base but it looks like A-Rod gets under the tag. I would have to say that's a bad call by Tom Hallion at second base. And Joe Torre is out arguing that call and certainly the angle we saw it appears as though A-Rod was safe and Torre is stating his case as we get another look. Well there's an argument that Matsui didn't even apply the tag as A-Rod slides right underneath it. It would certainly appear from here as though A-Rod got his foot in before Matsui reached to get the other foot. He got his left foot to the bag as Matsui was reaching for the right foot. And torrey has been out there arguing and finally gives it up. So the Yankees have a 2 nothing lead. Gonzalez finally gets an out as Valentin throws out A-Rod at second base. And there you get a better look at the fact that A-Rod really did beat the throw. Well, he beat the throw and Matsui just missed the front leg that touched the bag first. So here's Jorge Posada and he takes a strike. So a very rocky start for Jeremy Gonzalez and now the Mets forced to bring the infield in with Giambi at third and one out. And Posada hits it at Matsui. Giambi will hold and that's the second out. So a big out for Gonzalez as he pins Giambi at third at least for the moment. Now two down in the inning with two runs home and Robinson Cano will bat. The way this inning has gone I think that Jeremy Gonzalez would be thrilled to get out of this inning at two nothing. The Mets and Gonzalez would be thrilled. So here is Cano in his first full year in the big leagues hitting at 317 and he takes a letter high strike. He has had some recent problems defensively but he has hit from the day he arrived in the big leagues. Drives one toward the gap in left center field and that's in for an extra base hit. Giambi trots home to score. It's a double for Robinson Cano and the Yankees have a three to nothing first inning lead. Well Gary other than the slider to Jeter every pitch has been a fastball every pitch has been up in the strike zone that's belt high and just a beautiful swing from Cano level head on the ball drives it from where it's pitched and splits the gap. Well this exact same approach from Gonzalez enabled him to retire eight of the first nine batters he faced in Milwaukee but you know that the Yankees went to school saw that Gonzalez was going to throw them all fastballs early in the game and they have really taken advantage. Here's Bernie Williams hitting seventh and he takes a breaking ball for a strike. Bernie playing left field. Hitting just 231. 2,245 hits in his career, all in a Yankee uniform. And the slider misses one and one. Interesting, Gonzalez going to plan B as he starts. Bernie Williams in two consecutive breaking balls. And right now, Jeremy Gonzalez is just trying to keep himself in this game in the first inning. He's given up three runs and four hits already. And Williams drives one to left center field and that's an extra base hit. Cano comes in to score. Bernie Williams with an RBI double. Four to nothing Yankees. And they are just blistering Jeremy Gonzalez here in the opening inning. Now these are not cheap hits. They are just hitting the ball right on the screws. And now some concern for Bernie Williams as Joe Torrey and the trainer Gene Monahan are out. The Yankees have such incredible outfield problems right now with Matsui and Sheffield and Crosby all on the disabled list. The last thing they need in the world is for Bernie Williams to be hurt. Grimacing as he pulled into second base. 
When he's 37 years old now and not nearly the player he once was, but they need him desperately right now. Here's Melky Cabrera, and the Mets will intentionally walk the rookie and face Randy Johnson with two men on. Well, there's no action in the Mets' bullpen. So Willie Randolph is hoping that Gonzalez at least can get the pitcher out and start fresh in the second inning. Well, you just don't want to see this kind of start. It's the kind of start that Lima had yesterday early in the game and put your team in a hole. Well, Omar Manaya was talking with us before the game tonight and telling us that the Mets are going to sit down, get all the brain trust together, and discuss all their options and put everything on the table as far as the starting rotation is concerned. And that means Aaron Heilman and it means Mike Pelfrey and everybody else who's available and try and figure out the best way to go. The hope was that Gonzalez would come out and pitch a good game tonight, but now. With Lima having pitched so poorly and Gonzalez having this rocky first inning, it puts even more on the table. One and one to Johnson. I think it's pretty interesting that he used the word all because in the past they've always said that, you know, we're going to try to work with what we've got. The guys on the team will hope they can do the job. They never ever included Pelfrey and some of the other pitchers. And Randy hits a loud foul ball. Randy Johnson has one home run in his career, a lifetime 127 hitter. Well, as a pitcher, anytime you get in it back before you take the mound, you know you're having a good day. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Two on and two out, four runs home for the Yankees here in the top of the first. And Johnson strikes out, but an ugly first inning for Jeremy Gonzalez. The Yankees score four runs on five loud hits. Randy Johnson takes the mound for the Yankees for his 10th start of the year and he's got himself a nice cushion to work with before he throws his first pitch. Here's the Mets lineup that he'll face brought to you by Nissan your local Nissan dealers Carlos Beltran has done well in the past against the big unit. Notice that Cliff Floyd is out of the lineup the third time in a week against a left hander that Cliff has been benched and Jose Valentin who's been hot gets the start in left field. Well, Randy Johnson, you see that record, but that high ERA. Never do you see Johnson with that kind of ERA. And, you know, people have been talking that he might have lost his intimidation factor. He's given up a lot, two home runs in his last start. Last year, his career high, 32 home runs in 05. Here's a Ford. Here's a look at the defense brought to you by your Tri State Quality Ford store. You see Giambi at first base. Need him to play first now because they don't have a chance to DH him. Posada behind the plate. Do you know how much work oh. it had to take to do that? <laughs> Look at that. That is awesome. It is Good amazing. Good job. That's a fan. I'm going to do that tomorrow. Oh, I can't. <laughs> Never mind. Here's Reyes. <laughs> Takes ball one. I had a thought, but let <laughs> yeah. me get my son to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Reyes hitting at 256. And takes a strike from Johnson, one and one. Reyes in an eight for 44 skid right now. And takes the backdoor slider away, two and one. Paul LaDuca waiting on deck. And then Carlos Beltran as the Mets try to fight back here in the bottom of the first. Three and one to Reyes. Randy has not been walking people, only 15 walks in 53 innings. But he also hasn't been striking people out the way he used to. And Reyes takes a strike. And we talked about swings and misses. Two years ago, 14.8% of Randy's pitches were swung and missed. Now it's 9.3%. That's a huge drop. Reyes fouls this one away. And I guess that tells you more than anything else that his stuff is just not what it was. Well, if you took, took a left handed pitcher anywhere in baseball and said that he threw 92 miles an hour and had a good slider, you go, I want him on my team, but it's dropped off so much from where he used to throw 98, 99 miles an hour. Pretty good lefty in his day, Ron Guidry, now the Yankee pitching coach. And Reyes takes ball four. Well, Reyes has now drawn 17 walks already this season. At 29 all of last year. And so 
Randy Johnson handed a 4 0 lead, walks a guy who's generally pretty tough to walk, leading off in the bottom of the first. Well, if you're a starting pitcher, you're kicking yourself if you do that when you have the lead. So here's LaDuca. Paul's got a six game hitting streak going. Reyes, 14 steals on the year. And Johnson looks in on him. Randy Johnson never known as a left hander who's had a great move but most of his career hasn't had a lot of people on base so he never <laughs> need to <laughs> learn a move. The left handers they'll play games with the base runners just with their eyes. Reyes getting back easily on the first two throws. See that by Randy Johnson he looked at Reyes looked home and then threw over through the first base. Yankees played aggressively in the top of the first inning scored four runs. See if the Mets are aggressive on the bases here, down by four. Duca takes a strike. Well, I believe that Reyes should stay right where he is. I think uh, four nothing lead. I don't think you should be that aggressive. I think Randy Johnson gets the ball rid of the ball pretty good. Throws a lot of fastballs up and away to hitters. Also, it's an easy pitch for Posada to throw on. Duca punches it foul 0 and 2. Laduca's had more at bats by far against Randy Johnson than any other hitter in the Mets lineup having played in the Ameri in the uh, National League West for several years when Randy was with the Diamondbacks and Laduca was with the Dodgers. I don't know what you think Gary but a lot of these stats where they say guys hitting 333 is one for three that means nothing to me but 52 at bats does mean something. That's what Laduca has against Randy Johnson and he's battled him on pretty even terms hitting 269 against him. Takes a slider inside one and two. You see the numbers for Laduca. When Johnson at his prime when he had his electric stuff that slider down and in more right handed hitters swung at that pitch than any other pitch he threw. Randy Johnson will turn 43 years of age in September. And Laduca bloops one right along the line and it falls in. Reyes to third and the Mets have the first two on against Johnson on the bottom of the first. Just a little parachute by Laduca in the right spot. Well he gets jammed by this pitch up and in. Laduca just trying to stay alive, trying to foul it off, but gets a break and bloops it right in front of the right field of Cabrera. You can see the ball beat him on that inside corner, but just strong enough to muscle it out to right field. And again, that's a pitch where in the past maybe Randy gets a swing and miss. Well, absolutely. Usually he just, if that pitch was up and in on right handers, that was by him. So now the Mets with a chance to get right back in it, down 4 0, and here's Beltron. Takes the slider for ball one. The problem, Gary, is that as Randy Johnson starts to make this transition, if he can, into a more, you know, a pitcher, a thinking man's pitcher, you know, he's all, always been just a two pitch pitcher. Good slider, and he gets even on Beltron. Well, he throws a changeup, but that's not his strength. He'd have to go where he's kind of sinking his fastball a little more, maybe, trying to get some ground balls. Changing speeds on his slider would be something he could do. It'll be whether he can do it. Beltron hits one to deep off field. Forget it. A three run bomb by Beltron to the back of the bullpen. And it's a one run ball game. Yankees with a barrage against Jeremy Gonzalez in the top of the first and Beltran gets almost all of it back with one enormous swing. Well, Carlos Beltran trying to tell Met fans in the past if the Yankees got up 4 0 they might have laid down but they're not laying down tonight as he hits that bomb to left field. Eleventh home run of the year for Beltran is third from the right side he's homer down two straight days and it's four to three still nobody out and Delgado <laughs> takes a strike. Well Gonzalez got hurt in the first inning with put fastballs up and so does Johnson as Beltran gets all of that high fastball. 
Well, he started Beltron off with two sliders, but Beltron buries the fastball, and now Delgado grounds one toward the middle. Base hit. So the first four Mets have all reached base. Still nobody out. I'll tell you in the past, in his prime, and everyone gets older, but this game would have been over if Randy Johnson was pitching. And he just looks a little bit lost out there. The pitchers are up in the strike zone. And also batters are not backing out. They're just staying there and taking pitches. And in the past, this is a fastball that sometimes Johnson, when he was throwing 98, 90 miles an hour, they would foul that back maybe. But Beltran centered it. This one was 95, which is the hardest pitch Randy's thrown, and it went 410 feet the other way. Now here's David Wright. David at 307 on the year and 355 against lefties. And takes the backdoor slider for a strike. Delgado now the tying run at first with nobody out. We're still in the first inning. What kind of game is this going to be? <laughs> Wright fouls it back 0 and 2. Well, after the Yankees took that 4 0 lead, the crowd kind of got quiet. The Met part of the crowd, anyway. The Met part of the crowd, <laughs> anyway. Exactly. But they're back to life, the Met part of the crowd. I will say this Met fans, I think, have taken command of their ballpark better this year than they have the last few seasons. Right fouls it off. There seem to be fewer Yankee fans than there have been here at Shea over the last few years when it would almost be a 50 50 proposition. Met fans clearly dominant so far tonight. That's Elisa Milano, the star of the hit show Charmed on the TNT network. She's been an actress forever, child actress. I forget the name. Who's the boss? Who's She's the on boss? That show. I know that's Randy Johnson's personal favorite. Who's the boss? Owen oh, to the right. And then Johnson bounces the slider. Now Randy Johnson showing every sign of his 42 years. And you know the Yankees have got to live and die with this guy. They've got him signed not only for this year but for next year as well. His contract runs out. A year from September when he'll be 44. Well, that's the risk you run when you sign older players to long term deals. You just don't know when the tipping point comes. Two and two to right. And that's not to say that you know, Randy's washed up. I, I'm not, I don't mean to intimate that at all. But when you get to this age and you start to falter, you have to wonder. So Brian Cashman, Yankee GM, looking on. 2 2 to right. Way inside. So right gets flipped, and now it's 3 and 2. Well, he wasn't trying to throw at him, of course. This is a slider down and in. Nifty footwork by David Wright just to get out of the way. Well, Johnson had him 0 2. Randy Johnson, 268 wins. And while Tom Glavin is starting to close in on 300, you have to wonder whether Randy's going to have a chance to get there. See if Delgado runs. He does not, and Wright strikes out. And that's the first out. Well, here's a swing and a miss. Good slider from Johnson after he's thrown a bad one that almost hit Wright. This one starts over the middle of the plate and breaks down and in. The kind of swings you would see a lot four or five years ago. You know, Gary, there's a few pitchers in this park that have made transitions late in their career. Randy Johnson's going to have to do that too. Pedro, Glavin, and Messina on the Yankee side. Here's Xavier Nady, and he fouls one off. And you so, might add to that list as well pitchers in this park who've made the transition. The guy who's going to join us a little later today, the franchise, Tom Seaver. Certainly did. Later in his career, had a great changeup that he used. Is Tom terrific and he'll be with us in the fourth inning today. Or maybe even the third. 
always had a little hurry. 0 oh, and 2 to Nady. Kaz Matsui waiting on deck. The left hander that I remember lost everything on his fastball and made the transition better than anyone was Frank Tanana. He went from being a pitcher who threw 98 miles an hour, striking out the world, to a really just a sinker changeup pitcher. Nady pulls the slider foul. That was our old colleague Todd Callis who had that great line about Tanana. He said, in the 70s he threw in the 90s, and in the 90s he throws in the 70s. <laughs> New seats here at Shea State, and that looks like first class in an airplane. That's the front row, and Nady strikes out. Well, Randy Johnson going up and away to Van Nady, back to back strikeouts. Well, slider down and in to right, and fastball out of the strike zone away. Just elevating that pitch another few inches. Those are great seats. No, they're right above the berm out there in right field. Now we talked about them making use of that berm, right? <laughs> there we now go. They finally have. Probably do even some more layers coming down. The more revenue streams we can think of. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Matsui with two out and Delgado at first, and he lines one to left, but right at Williams, and Bernie surrounds it. Side retired. So Randy Johnson gets four, gives back three. Beltron does it with one swing, his 11th home run, four to three after one. Well, things don't look as bleak for Jeremy Gonzalez as he takes the mound for the second, as they did when he left the mound after the first. But Johnny Damon's first pitch swinging pops one up. Kaz Matsui retreating. One pitch and one retired. Well, things have already started much better in the second for Gonzalez. Get to Shea the easy way. Take the train to the game. The Long Island Railroad from Penn Station or Woodside stops right at Shea, and the number seven subway conveniently serves Times Square and Grand Central's Metro North trains. Mass transit is easier and faster. Get on board at Mets.com. And if there was ever a day to take mass transit, today was the day. Grand Central Parkway was closed because of a down power line. I know that some folks sat in traffic for hours trying to get out of it. Now, do we have a famous player at the barbecue? <laughs> <laughs> you know, they've got Boog Powell in Baltimore, and they've got Greg Luzinski in Philadelphia. Well, I remember the former Houston Astro pitcher, Charlie Kerfeld, was seen eating ribs in his <laughs> in the bullpen. We need to bring back Dave Kingman to run the grill. Jeter swings at the high fastball 0 2. So Gonzalez going a little further up the ladder on Jeter, who drove home a run with a base hit on a high fastball back in the first. Up the middle and grab by Gonzalez. Got it right on the heel of the glove. Two away. Well, nice play on this sharply hit ball from Jeter. Fastball away. Sometimes the ball catches you as that ball hit Gonzalez right in the glove. So two out and nobody on. And Gonzalez trying for a quick inning as he takes on Giambi, and the Mets will put on the overshift. And Giambi takes a strike. Hole of the wall gang looking on. <laughs> oh, and to the Giambi. They're perched everywhere. Watching Mets, Yanks, 06. One and two to Giambi. Giambi walked and scored in the first inning. This is him. Oh, 41 walks now. In there for a call, strike three. 
Great bounce back inning for Jeremy Gonzalez. His second strikeout as he gets Giambi looking. Four to three Yankees. Champion, New York Mets. Jorge Posada is sitting in the Yankee dugout. Randy Johnson is standing on the mound. That's not a good combination for the Yankees right now. No, it's not. Obviously, something's wrong with Jorge. He looks he's like coming he's out of the game. Yep. Yep. And he's under the weather. I, I, I don't know. But I'll tell you what, this is a Yankee team that is just having all sorts of injury problems right now to key personnel. Well, that was what happened a moment ago. Randy was warming up. Asada got set to throw the ball down to second, and I, I have no idea. Jeez. So Kelly Stinnett, the former Met, is going to take over behind the plate for the Yankees. No, well, they've already lost. Matsui and Sheffield. They're three and five hitters. Now they've lost Posada, who had been filling in in the middle of that batting order. So three incredibly enormous bats now out of that Yankee lineup. Well, while Stinnett gets himself ready, let's take a look at the first run of the game brought to you by Dunkin' Donuts. America runs on Dunkin'. Seems like a long time ago. <laughs> it does. They power that ball, though. Yankees in that first inning, but Gonzalez had a good second one. And the Mets were able to bounce back on Beltron's three run homer. And so the Mets will face Randy Johnson in the bottom of the second. Kelly Stinnett now behind the plate for the Yankees, and we'll get a report on Posada as soon as we can. Jose Valentin leads off. Valentin getting the start in left field, Cliff Floyd has been struggling particularly against left handers. So Valentin who's been hot in the lineup in left field pops it foul. Of course Valentin is 0 for 13 in his career against Randy Johnson. There's Brian Cashman trying to find out from Torrey what has befallen Jorge Posada. At least Brian's smiling. That's probably a good sign. Backdoor breaking ball, one and two to Valentin. Jeremy Gonzalez on deck, and then Jose Reyes here in the bottom of the second. Valentin pulls a foul. We'll say Valentin filled in Saturday and Sunday in Milwaukee for Floyd against a couple of lefties. Had six hits and six RBIs in the two games. Played second base yesterday in St. Louis and hit a home run. So he's earning himself some more playing time. And with every at bat, it looks like he's gaining in confidence. The beginning of the year, it looked like his bat was definitely a little slow, maybe from playing in that World Baseball Classic, but. You're right Gary he seems to be on the ball now. Valentin coming back after a lost year with the Dodgers last year. Battled through injuries and a buck 70 when he got a chance to play and frankly didn't hit all spring didn't hit the first month of the season and he wondered at age 36. Whether he had much left. But he had a great road trip. Three and two. Randy several times early in this game has gotten ahead of hitters but been unable to put them away. Valentin hits one foul got ahead of the slider and pulled it. Johnson just trying to settle into this game. Valentin fouls another one away, and he's already seen nine pitches in this turn at bat. This is not the kind of thing you would usually see with Randy Johnson on the mound, his nine pitch at bats. When he got ahead of you, he usually buried you. Not oh, able to do that with Valentin. Randy always has thrown a lot of pitches because he struck out so many hitters. Valentin pops this one foul and Stinnett watches it sail out of play. 
And in the past, Randy would throw 130, 140 pitches a game and not blink, but and now he's 42 years old. He's not going to throw 140 pitches in a game anymore. And combine that with the fact that he's having trouble putting people away, and it's hard for him to work all that deep into games. This will be the 11th pitch of the at bat. Ball four. So Valentin with a tremendous at bat, and the Mets draw a leadoff walk from Randy Johnson for the second straight inning. Well, the pitchers that make that transition from a power pitcher to a finesse pitcher almost you count them on on two hands. Maybe there's just not that many of those guys that do it and do it successfully. The reason being is that once you lose some of that miles per hour on your fastball for Randy, it's always been about intimidation. Also, Gonzalez trying to sacrifice fouls it off. while for Gonzalez who had been playing in the American League with the Devil Rays and the Red Sox ever since he hurt his arm with the Cubs he was out of the major leagues for five years came up in 97 with the Cubs had a great rookie year but hurt his arm the next season and it wasn't until 03 that he got back to the big leagues with Tampa Bay. He gets this bunt down very nicely. Danette makes the play, so Gonzalez, after an eight year drought, has that <laughs> next sacrifice. Well, it might have been a long time before sacrifice, but good form by Jeremy Gonzalez. Had the bat out in front of the play. That is the key. If you have it out in front, the ball will stay fair. So Gonzalez gets the job done. And the Mets have the tying run in scoring position with Reyes coming up. Reyes walked and scored in the first inning. Reyes has now scored 32 runs, and that's third in the National League, despite a 318 on base percentage. Last year, he had just a 300 on base percentage and scored 99 runs, a combination that hadn't been pulled off in the majors in more than 70 years. And he's got that on base percentage up just enough that there's no telling how many runs he might score. Well, 32, and this is the 41st game for the Mets. And as much as you'd love to see Reyes break through in terms of his consistency, even what he's doing now is tremendously productive in terms of getting on and getting in. Valentin at second and one out. Reyes pops it up. Two away. So Paul LaDuca will try and get the runner in from second. If you've been watching the Mets, you know that getting runners home from scoring position has not been easy for the Mets to do lately. Yeah, their lineup, it just has not clicked. Always seems if they get a guy on third and less than two outs, not always, but they've had struggles getting the guys in. They've hit a lot of home runs now. That's how they've done the majority of their scoring. So they did it in the first inning, got the first two on, and Beltron hit a three run homer. And that's to be recommended, too. We want to see that during <laughs> the course of the season. As you see, Carlos Beltran on deck waiting his turn. But the Mets is a team hitting just 243 with runners in scoring position. Contrast that with the Yankees, who are hitting 290 with runners in scoring position. Laduca bounces one foul. Laduca had a base hit his first time up, a bloop to right. He's now hitting seven straight games and 15 of his last 16. And Willie Randolph has done a terrific job of giving Laduca enough rest and not. Giving him the temptation to ride him a little bit harder here early in the season. Fouled away. 
You know, Gary mentioned in the lineup, if you look up and down the lineup, you see some nice numbers. You see some guys have done some nice things. Carlos Beltran with more power early in the season. Leduca with a nice average. Reyes has driven in 20 runs. But they just haven't, you know, Delgado's been amazing. But they just haven't clicked, I think, like they can. I think they could be a real tough lineup scoring lots of runs. It would be a good time to do it now with the problems at the bottom of the rotation. Valentin steals third without a throw. Got a big jump on Randy Johnson. And if you're going to try and steal third with two out, you better make it. <laughs> and Valentin did. Well, easy stolen base by Valentin. Big kick by Randy Johnson. If you want to watch A Rod, Alex Rodriguez, he didn't even move to cover the bag. Two and two to Laduca. First stolen base for Valentin. Loduca pulls one over Valentin's head. Low bridge, everybody down. Head down. And if you want to know why Alex Rodriguez did not move to cover the bag, he wants to hold his ground and make sure if Loduca puts a bat on the ball that he can make the play. Not that ball going through the hole. Tying run at third and two down. We're only in the second inning. Right at Jeter. And he throws out Laduca to end the inning. So the Mets get a leadoff walk but can't get Valentin around. We go to the third here at Shea. Tom Seaver will join us in the top of the third. Yankees four and the Mets three. Alex Rodriguez leads off the third against Jeremy Gonzalez and takes a strike. And look who's joining us. It's the franchise. It's, it's like old home week, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> look what what mama, look what walked through the door. Here we are. That's right. That's the first time I've been in this booth in a long time and haven't had to wear a sport coat. You know what I mean? Good job was, on your part. Except I'd for say. the days like when that. it was about 95 degrees and about 98 percent humidity, they let me take my coat off every once in a while. Now you're not wearing nice a shirt. Nice to be back, boy. Not wearing a tie and coat, that's but right. you're wearing this this lovely shirt yep. that says MasterCard. MasterCard and PayPass. Pay pay that's exactly. I've been in kind of promoting this all day long, and this is a this is a system that's in a 11 ballparks. It's here at Chase Stadium. It's over at Yankee Stadium. And you get your PayPass card, and you go up there, and you if you say you want to go get a Coke and a hot dog and get some food refreshments, and it will take whatever you're buying, and you take this card out, and you just tap it, and you go. You don't have to get any change. You don't have to get your wallet out or anything like that. And it's very convenient. There they are. There's my guys right there. I've been with them all day. It made very good sense, and we've been uh, we've been yakking about it all day long. Nice job. Yeah. Three and one day run and Jeremy Gonzalez walks Alex Rodriguez to start the third inning. Tom, so, we've been talking a lot about Randy Johnson tonight and, and trying to get a handle on an aging pitcher yeah. trying to reinvent himself and how mm -hmm. you go about doing that. Well I looked at him. I haven't seen him throw. It's the first time I've seen him throw all year long and I see dead hands and I hate dead hands and especially when you get older. Uh, and you know exactly what I'm talking exactly. about and you probably have talked about it I don't know Ronnie but uh, uh, that's that's what jumps off the page at me and his hands are dead and when you get older you have to buy your body a little bit of time to get the throwing arm to throwing position to get it to release point and you do it with a couple of ways you do it by moving your hands and finishing the bottom half talking about the leg lift finish that to give your give your arm enough time to get to an angle if you notice if you notice when he's throwing he's throwing back to front. He's not really throwing top to bottom. His elbow is about uh, oh, it's about shoulder high. So he's throwing. I actually throwing back to front. And you've got to be throwing on somewhat of a downward plane to get a different trajectory. You know, downward plane at going to home plate. So that's what I see. And then and sometimes things that are wrong just absolutely jump off the plate at you. And that's one thing that that I really sense this evening. Kelly Stinnett subbing for Jorge Posada dumps a base in and a right and the Yankees have first and third and nobody out. Here's a shot of it and Randy's always been a guy where his shoulders are moving laterally. He's never had that front side down run. You, yeah. know, you know what I'm talking about. But he is it's almost as if his left elbow was down too low and he's beginning to push the ball. So his his ball is going to, to home plate only in one plane as opposed to two. So that's that's what I see and it's a struggle. It, also, know, it also affects the breaking ball too because yeah, it takes sure, the tilt sure. off that breaking ball. Did you see him? He's underneath the slider. Yeah. He's getting his fingers underneath the slider, throwing the ball. So it's. Uh, so how? I mean, you if, know. if you're a guy like Randy, who's been so dominant over the course sure. of his career, how difficult is it to 
have the mindset to make that you change. You just got to be every. I, I, mean, I would ask Ronnie this question: When things go wrong and you're not throwing the ball, what's the first thing that everybody does? They try to do it faster. Try to throw it harder. Cave and it's man. exactly the wrong thing to do. You should pull the throttle back and not do everything so quickly. Let it slow. Let your body get into throwing position. Cano to deep center. Beltron back. Makes the catch at the wall. Rodriguez tags. He'll come in to score. A 410 foot sacrifice fly for Robinson Cano and the Yankees now lead five to three. Well good play here by Beltran. You can see he's looking at the wall making sure he has plenty of room plenty of time. And the thing you have to do there after you make the play you want to make sure you get the ball in quickly even though it's the net the catchers at first base you never know he might try to tag on you. So one out and one on with a run in five to three Yankees and here's Bernie Williams. And he takes a strike let's check in with Chris Cotter. All right, thanks guys. Jorge Posada left the game with tightness in his lower back and he is listed as day to day as uh, m many of the Yankees are guys. Tell you what they're taking the heart right out of that batting order. <laughs> <laughs> Dropping like flies over there Yankee Stadium. Tom Seaver sitting with us in the booth here in the top of the third and I, Tom, I, I know that you left us after last year to, to go back and work on your on your wine. So you have to give us an update on the grapes. Uh, the grapes are uh, grapes from last year are doing extremely well and uh, we got the I think we got four and a half tons three and a half no four and a half tons last year. We'll get eight and a half tons this year. It looks wow. like uh, now we got let's see, we, six and I don't know we got enough 450 cases of wine. That's all I know. <laughs> and uh, and this year we get a little bit more and it's just you know it's a lot of fun. I came on Monday. Uh, from San Francisco here and I was in my vineyard it's it, you know when you find something that you really like to do and love it so I'm out there from I work from six thirty to eight o'clock. Yes. <laughs> that was a you good know. hour. And then my wife gets up and Nancy gets up she goes you know I take my dog and I'm gone baby and I was came back at eight o'clock and I got you know packed my bag and went to the airport and you know flew to New York here so it's uh, uh, things are good. I mean we had enough rain this year for you know we had it kind of like Boston had the other day so. Uh, during the winter it doesn't really hurt the grapes but it's a lot of fun it's a new, new learning experience and I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. You know I think of you in, in your vineyards like you know, Lucy this. Ricardo. I don't think this is, I don't think this is going to be good. I'm taking a wild guess. I don't think this is the kind of like the compliment that I've been looking for. But I, I, it's obviously a lot of hard work and, and yeah. you're, you love it. I do like it and I, I do as much as I want to do and then you know my vineyard manager he, he does and hires gets a crew to do everything else I and mean, he does about 20 vineyards. I'm probably the smallest one he has but when something has to get technically done or professionally done or when I can't do it like this with this week's grunt work he'll you know some he sends somebody over there to get it done so but it's fun yeah it's a lot it's very enjoyable. Well I remember it was nice enough when I played with you that I went over to your house and you used to always love to garden even then yeah. you had a beautiful garden yeah. now it's translated into the wine that's fantastic. There's Melky Cabrera with two out and he fouls one back. That's pretty much it was the birth of it too. Yeah. Doing, a, doing a vineyard doing the vineyard was coming coming from and as you know you get so obsessed in your career professional career and you don't really look much outside of it. And I you know finished physically of being a player and I went home and I you know I created a garden and I found it very relaxing very creative and very enjoyable. You miss being away from the game though. Not really no. No. Forty years. You I mean you forty miss, years you, is enough. You miss us. I miss you. <laughs> and I wouldn't consider you the game. I mean game. in California when we see game we usually have a rifle or something. You know if you would like to be in that category I'd be I would be more, more than happy to make your you know I, I'm make sure you I want to be the game. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in the game not the game. Not really. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's a good it's a good question and stuff. I, I still enjoy and really love reading box scores. It just kind of tells the story of what happens in three hours. So I've enjoyed all that aspect. I still do. I mean that's and you know Ron that that was one of the ways I prepared for a game. You look and you say well who's driving in runs who's going over four who's striking out etc. when your next start is against those guys. And uh, uh, but I've you know 40 years is a long time. I'm doing something else which I really like to do. And as long as that lasts it's fine with me. Yeah. And you know what. Very few airplanes that way. <laughs> Cabrera up the middle and that keeps the inning going for the Yankees. 
seventh hit off Jeremy Gonzalez and Randy Johnson will come up with two out and two on. You know one thing I'll ask you Ron too that I've been you know I've seen the kid Bannister because I played with his dad in yes. Chicago and I saw him at spring the young man in spring training last year. What do you tell me about it. Well he heard he really pitched well he was two and all in the beginning of the season pulled a hamstring went down made a rehab start yesterday got, again got hurt again pulled it, pulled it again. What's so. the stuff. What's he got good stuff. stuff yeah he's uh, more of a fastball four pitch pitcher. Good change up mixes it up. He does, he's not one of those guys going to blow you away but he really knows how to pitch. He came up with he wanted went to USC as a second base. Right. Yep. That's what he wanted to do but yeah. he, it didn't work out. He's his stuff is his stuff is good because he has four pitches and he throws strikes right. smart has a lot of poise. I'm sure his father had a lot to do with that. Throw strikes and get ahead of your hitter yeah. first pitch strikes and I mean, amazingly yeah, when he didn't throw strikes early in the season had tremendous wherewithal for pitching out of trouble. Which you love to see in a young guy. I love he's, that's that's especially a guy that doesn't do well as far as throwing hard and he has to learn how to do that too. You know if you can't strike somebody out then you got to you have to get have to put the ball in play where you want to put it into play you know. I've heard from more than one person you're talking about he's a very, very bright young man. Yeah he's really bright and he, do, he does what you told me when I first came up this four or five outs you got to get as a starting pitcher if you want to be successful. Randy Johnson up the middle Reyes smothers it to prevent the run. And that's a good job by Reyes to knock that ball down and that keeps Stinnett from scoring. Well this is what you do as a middle infielder with two outs you got to make sure that if you can't make the play you dive and keep it in the infield which Reyes does beautiful play here. And once he kept it in the infield the Stinnett could not score and it gives his pitcher another chance to get out of the inning. Well you talk about those outs you've got to get here you are yeah. right now. And you never know when they come. You know, it's not always the seventh and eighth inning. You could have one in the first. That's absolutely second. right. Yep. Bases loaded, two out. Yankees up five three, and Damon takes ball one. It's, a, it's actually a two step process. It looks like maybe he got hurt here. Well, oh, the little finger he got jammed, maybe. I think he. Uh, you watch his glove hand kind of rolls over on it, on his wrist. Lucky he didn't hurt it more. Two and zero to Damon. One of the things we talked about too about you know you do need say. Five outs in a nine inning ball game. You need certain five outs if you're going to win. You got to recognize them yes. first. And sometimes they're very subtle. Sometimes yep. they're very subtle. You get an out when you can get, you can get the big bomber up leading off the next yeah. inning, yep. so he doesn't have a chance to hit the three run home run. Get the eighth guy out with a couple guys on. Have the pitcher leading off Absolutely. the next inning. Absolutely. A lot of guys. A lot of times, just the number eight hitter in the lineup that is so incredibly important. Stanett at third, Cabrera at second, and the big unit at first. You saw Darren Oliver up in the bullpen. Damon lifts one to left shallow, but Valentin in. And so the big out recorded by Gonzalez. He holds the Yankees to his one run at the top of the third. Stay with us for the bottom of the inning. We're heading, we're heading back to Manhattan right now as we speak. But good to see you guys. Thanks, Thanks for coming. Tommy. Hey, hi to everybody. I didn't see today. Let's say Reyes having that left hand and wrist looked at. You know it's very similar to what happened to Hideki Matsui when he came in the outfield the glove got underneath him and it turned over and watch as he dies for it and kind of just all of his body weight lands on that left wrist. Does it help at all having a wrist taped when it will, that happens. It will help because it'll keep it a little firmer than it would be naturally so that might help. You see he's pulling on his fingers. Well a lot of times you're pulling your fingers here to get some life. Uh, into that hand because it gets numb right away. Beltron had a three run homer his first time up. Now he's 11 for the year. Remember, he only hit 16 all of last season. And they were just a quarter of the way through the season. One and two to Beltron. I think that goes with he's taking a lot more pitches out of the strike zone. That's why he's walking. So when he's centering the ball, that's why he's getting his home runs. He's getting that pitch to hit. 27 walks already. After walking only 56 times all last season, so the numbers in, in that regard, the walks and the home runs, both up, and they are related. They are related. I think that what he's going to have to do, though, in some of those at bats, is uh, if he can start driving the ball the other way a little bit, I think it'll help his average. Two to the Beltron strikes him out with a slider. Third strikeout for Randy Johnson. Well. Johnson throwing a little better slider. You can see when he's got his good one, the batters will be out on their front foot, and they'll miss it by three or four inches as it dives down and into the right-handed hitters. So one out and nobody on. Here's Delgado. 
That's at three runs home and Delgado followed with a single before Johnson recorded an out but the Mets have not had another hit since. And Delgado who has been hit by seven pitches already this season nearly got plunked again. I see Stanett setting up inside that's where you have to pitch Delgado whether you're a left hander or a right hander you got to show him that you can throw strikes inside which he didn't there. One and one to Carlos. Well I think you know, we've talked a lot about Randy tonight and his struggles and I think maybe the best illustration is that lefties are hitting 281 against him this year. It used to be lefties didn't get a sniff. Well, they used to get Johnsonitis as soon as he was on the mound. <laughs> they had a little, you know, sniffle. To short. And Jeter, with plenty of time, throws out Delgado two away. So two out and nobody on. Let's take a look at today's pitchers' high speed, brought to you by Verizon Online DSL. Now at a great low price. Randy topping out at 95, and Jeremy Gonzalez at 91. I used to be able to count on one hand the left handers around the league that would stay in the lineup when Randy Johnson pitched. It was almost entirely a right handed lineup. Here's David Wright who struck out his first time up. Remember when John Olerud homered against Randy in the playoffs in 99 it was the first home run by a left hander in two years against him. Last year he gave up only one home run to a lefty but he also gave up 31 home runs to right hand back which was maybe a little bit of a sign of age right rips one foul as he got ahead of that slider two and one you know, Randy was always a guy that would really push off violently off the mound all arms and legs at you of course his height was a big factor but watch his back leg it doesn't really push off and it almost stays behind him see how that left left leg just stays back there one extra second Let's give you a little better look here as he's trying to throw this fastball you see this leg just stays back there and now it comes through that's a big delay that means you're not pushing off hard and right as a base hit. David Wright with a two out single. And the Mets will get the tying run to the plate with Xavier Nady. Oh, remember also that Randy Johnson has had significant physical problems yes. with his knee and with his back. And you wonder whether that has something to do with it. I think he might be overcompensating sometimes for those injuries as showed Ron Gidry on the on the bench, the pitching coach for the Yankees and no one got more out of his back leg than Ron Guidry. Not a very big guy, probably in his prime, maybe 5'11, 165 pounds. And he was just a, a whirling dervish of pushing off that mound and coming at you. There's Gator. Louisiana Lightning. He was co captain of the Yankees with Willie Randolph from 86 to 89. 80 lifts one to right center, pretty deep. Cabrera and Damon near the wall, and it's out of here! Xavier Nady ties the game with a two run homer. Ninth home run of the year for Nady, and it's five to five. And boy, did that ball carry to right center field. Well, both Damon and Cabrera, as they were running for the ball, kept looking at each other. You got it, I got it, you got it. No, no one's got it. As that ball clears the fence, Nady has shown some amazing power. They got him because they thought he was going to be a solid RBI guy. And he has shown a lot of power for the Mets early in this season. Mets fans want a curtain call. <laughs> Matt Suey. Takes one and one. By the way, I would never take a curtain call if Randy Johnson <laughs> was on the mound. No way. It's nine home <laughs> runs that Johnson's given up now this year. And an ugly cut by Matsui, one and two. Well, Randy appeared to be settling in. He retired Beltron and Delgado to start this inning, but right with a two out single, and Nady made him pay, and the game is even. 
And Matsui rips one foul. Jazz lined out to left his first time up. That's like a right. rusty wig. <laughs> it's an interesting hairstyles today. Darren Oliver up again in the bullpen. And Matsui hits it toward left center field, but Damon will get over. And that ends the inning. But the Mets get even against Randy Johnson, who had himself a 4 0 lead. Now it's gone. Navy with a 2 1 homer. And the game is even 5 to 5 as we go to the fourth at Shea. Well, Jeremy Gonzalez put the Mets in an early hole, but the Mets have gotten him out of that hole. So we start fresh in the fourth inning. Derek Jeter leads off. Jeter, one for two. He's driven in a run. And he fouls the first one back. Jeter now with 30 runs batted in on the year, hitting second in the order. This is a Yankee lineup, which before the season began looked like one of the most potent in the majors in years. They're averaging nearly 5.8 runs per game, but they have certainly had. Much of their production taken out of the middle of the lineup with Matsui out for at least three or four months. And Sheffield having missed a couple of weeks and probably going to miss a couple more. One and two to Jeter. Jeter has had a habit of being right in the middle of things against the Mets during these Subway Series games. Never had a more important hit against the Mets, though, than leading off game four of the World Series in 2000. First pitch from Bobby Jones, he hit it over the left field fence. And, you know, the thing about Jeter is he has such a great sense of the moment. The Mets had won game three, they'd gotten back to two games to one. First pitch of game four, gone. I remember I was here, reminded me of the first game. Sorry, the third game in the 1986 World Series where we had to win it. Lenny Dykstra let off with a home run off Oil Can Boyd. It's all as a head on Jeter, one and two. This is a little low. Well, he's an amazing player to see Giambi on deck, but he's one of the players to tell you the truth. When I look at players today, I wish I could spend a season playing with him just to watch him every day and how he goes about his work. Three and two to Jeter. Well so much of baseball now is consumed with statistics above all else. And this is a guy who simply transcends statistics. Over the back, fair ball. Ball dies as it hits something under the ball boy's stool. He got the stool out of the way, but I think it hit one of the balls or the towels and slowed down. Didn't affect the play, though. Jeter stops at second. Well, another fastball up in the strike zone. That has been the problem with Jeremy Gonzalez. It's probably the reason that he's only going to go three innings in a batter tonight. Well that's going to be it for Gonzalez. Darren Oliver will come in the game. This call to the bullpen is brought to you by Singular Wireless raising the bar. Gonzalez exits after three innings plus with the game tied at five. Jeremy Gonzalez out of the game after three innings plus and those were the numbers starting the night and they're only going to get more disparate after Jason tonight. Giambi. Martinez and Glavin versus the rest of the starting pitching staff and it's one of the reasons why Omar Manaya told us tonight that they're going to sit down and re-examine every available option. What happened if Darren Oliver has a nice three four innings tonight. Do you consider him he's been a starter. Well if you can get through Jason <laughs> Giambi it'll be quite a feat as you see the numbers there. Twenty two for thirty five six twenty nine Giambi against Oliver. And he hits him in the back. Well the batting average won't change. Trying to start him out with a first pitch curveball never does break. Now be a big guy just takes it in the back. 
Well, it sets up the double play. <laughs> A Rod during the break. Yeah, usually the hitters will go in there and they'll have some charts or they'll talk to someone who knows the pitcher and try to make sure here Donnie Ma Don Mattingly, hitting coach, is saying this is the book we have on him. Oh, this is what to expect. A Rod six for 15 against Oliver with a couple of home runs and he takes a strike. Two years ago, Alex Rodriguez went three for 24 against the Mets. And did not have a single hit in the three games played here at Shea. Last year, a completely different story. He hit 609 against the Mets, 14 for 23. In his second year in this rivalry. And he has a hit and a walk his first two trips today. There you see the contrast. Well, the Mets in their bullpen in the fourth inning. And Oliver gets ahead on A-Rod 0-2. Well, with respect to Donnie's wife, that's his little baseball <laughs> black book. <laughs> it's a lot smaller than Delgado's book. <laughs> but it seems to be heavily indexed. <laughs> 0 2 to A-Rod. Oliver keeps it away. One and two. Oliver pitched yesterday in St. Louis, worked a 1 2 3 inning in the Mets' loss to the Cardinals. For Darren, this is now his 13th appearance. He's been the long man when the Mets have needed one. And as a long man, that means you get irregular work. One and two to Rodriguez. Jeter at second, Giambi at first, and nobody out. Cliff Floyd with the night off tonight. I get the feeling we might see Cliff before this yeah. one's over. I think we might see both rosters by the time this one's over. The Yankees have already had to go to their bench for their backup catcher, Kelly Stinnett, which has uh, Miguel Cairo on alert, I'm sure, because Cairo, the former Met, almost certainly is the Yankees' emergency catcher. The outside corner, strike three called, and Arod does not like it one bit. Alfonso Marquez assures him it was a strike. One away. Well, as Arod says, no way as he walks away. Darren Oliver with this backdoor slider curveball. Rodriguez is saying that that it's going around the plate, as you'll see up top, and he might be right. Close enough, though. So one away and a chance for Oliver to get through this inning with a ground ball from Kelly Stinnett. And he throws the breaking ball inside. Stinnett came on when Posada left the game right before the bottom of the second with tightness in his upper back. He went out to warm up Randy Johnson and just took himself out of the game. Stinnett who played with the Mets early in his career. One and one to Kelly, whose nickname appropriately is Grinder. <laughs> and he is exactly that. Terrific guy. He's been a, a wonderful backup catcher for years in the big league. There's Miguel Cairo, hoping Stinnett stays healthy. Well, you can see the cat. Yeah, exactly. You can see the cat and mouse game between Oliver, Jeter, and Matsui trying to keep Jeter close because Jeter will try to steal a bag occasionally. In this situation, Jeter's already stolen the base tonight. Has seven for the year. Mets have not turned a lot of double plays this year, but they could sure use one for Oliver right now. That's last in the league at turning two. Of course, they're also first in the league in strikeouts, which negates a lot of double plays. Base hit to left field. Jeter around third, waved home by Larry Bowie. He'll score without a throw, and the Yankees regain the lead six to five. Well, Kelly Stinnett off the bench to replace the injured Posada. He's two for two, and now he's driven in the lead run. 
Well, this pitch catches the middle of the plate as he, Oliver's trying to throw that pitch away. You saw Laduca set up away, and that was the same pitch that he threw to A Rod, tried to backdoor a pitch. That one caught the plate, and Stanette delivered. That run is charged to Jeremy Gonzalez, so he's back on the hook. Final line on Gonzalez three innings plus, six runs, nine hits, three walks, three strikeouts. Here's Cano. And he rockets one to center, but right at Beltron, two away. And Cano hitting it hard for a third straight time. Previous time up, hit one to the fence that Beltron reeled in for a sacrifice fly. This time, a laser beam right at Beltron. Well, both. All three pitchers that have pitched so far in the game haven't been fooling too many people. So two on and two on. Gonzalez looks on, hoping that Oliver can minimize the damage and give the Mets a chance to bounce back again. You really see it on his face. He knew how important the start was. And had a chance to get himself in that rotation. And not to be. There's Bernie Williams, one for two. And Bernie has great numbers against Darren Oliver. 12 for 30, a 400 batting average with three home runs. This hasn't been an easy club for Mr. Oliver. 2 0 to Bernie. I'm thinking maybe there were a lot of short nights for Darren <laughs> when he was in Texas playing in Yankee Stadium. And yet his career record against the Yankees is 6 and 3. So go figure. How do you do it? <laughs> Amazing. On 2 and 0, Bernie pulls one foul. Well, arguably the, the best and most important game of Oliver's career was against the Yankees in the 1996 Division Series. He pitched against the Yankees in Texas, shut them out for eight innings, had a 2 0 lead going to the ninth. They left him in because the Rangers didn't have a bullpen, and he wound up getting charged with three runs and a 3 2 loss. But he was brilliant that, that, that night. Breaking ball toward the hole. Reyes with the backhand play. The third, not in time. Well, Reyes did everything that he could and again made sure he kept it on the infield first, then tried to get the force just a shade too late on Giambi. Sometimes you make great defensive plays where you don't get an out. And he did that when Gonzalez in the second inning, third inning, excuse me. And here, again, like you said, Gary, kept it in the infield, tried to get the ball to right on time but Giambi just beat it out good play by Reyes gives Oliver another chance to get out of this inning against Melky Cabrera base is loaded two down Cabrera has been intentionally walked and singled and he hits one to third and Wright will go to first with it and that ends the inning so Reyes saved a run in the third he saves another run in the fourth and it's six to five Yankees as we go to the bottom of the fourth at Shea we go to the bottom of the fourth been quite an offensive performance on both sides as Jose Valentin leads off against Randy Johnson and takes ball one and yet it's a 6 5 game could have been a whole oh. lot worse for the Mets if not for Jose Reyes the last two innings save two runs at least Valentin swings at the slider one and one talked about Valentin yesterday with that home run also had a walk and scored a couple of runs walked in the his first at bat. Also stole his first base of the year. Tapped weakly. A Rod charging. One away. So one out and nobody on. And Darren Oliver, a pretty good hitting pitcher, will bat for himself. Look we'll at the Dodge Oliver. trivia question. The question is how many times have the Mets entered a Subway Series with the better record? Tell you that this is the first time this season that the Mets have ever entered a series against the Yankees in first place. Oliver takes a strike. Willie Randolph wanted to get as many innings as he can out of Oliver, who came on with nobody out in the fourth. Oh and two to Oliver.
You see Randy's pitch count more than he'd like it to be in the fourth inning. And he strikes out Oliver on three pitches. That's the fourth strikeout for Johnson. Two out and nobody on. The shortstop, Jose Reyes. So Randy trying to do something that he has not done yet in this game, and that is put up a zero after his team scores for him. Yankees got four in the top of the first. Beltron's three run homer got most of it back in the bottom of the first. Yankees added a run in the third. Nady's two run homer tied it in the bottom of the third. Reyes takes a strike. Now the Yankees go in front on Kelly Stinnett's RBI single. And Randy's gotten the first two outs. And Reyes has a two out hit. Takes a turn on Cabrera and holds up. Of the three Yankee outfielders today, Melky Cabrera is the only one who can throw at all. Johnny Damon and Bernie Williams have distinctly poor arms. To answer the Dodge trivia question, how many times have the Mets entered a Subway Series with a better record? The answer is this is the third. July 2000, May 2005, and today. <laughs> So now Reyes aboard with two down representing the tying run. We'll see whether he can get a read on Johnson here. As Laduca stands in. As opposed to the first inning when it was four to nothing. And you shouldn't steal a base then. Now is a time if he can get a read to go. Try to get in scoring position for Laduca with two outs. Remember Johnson retired the first two in the third. Wright got a hit and Nady hit a two run homer. Retired the first two here in the fourth and now Reyes aboard. A pitch out, but he's not going anywhere. We have seen very few teams pitch out against Reyes this year. Why do you suppose that is? I don't know, because that you know you would think that at one point you'd want to do it one or two times a game, but I think that managers don't like to pitch out and it not work. As they see both players staring right through each other. He got him picked off. Giambi runs him. Pino runs him back. Reyes is safe at first. The Yankees botch the rundown and Reyes gets out of it. <laughs> Lee Mazzilli's just <laughs> beside himself. Yankee bench coach. Well, Reyes gets picked off and he knows he's out, so he's going to get in that rundown. And he has such great speed that Robinson Cano just did not. Why didn't he know throw how the ball? fast he was. He should have thrown the ball, but this is the thing that has bothered Cano. Not only has he made errors, but his instincts as an infielder are not great. Well, you had Randy Johnson standing right there waiting for the throw, but Cano never made it, and Reyes got back safe. So the inning continues. Let's see if the Mets can take advantage. Johnson has thrown over two times in a row. Very rarely do pitchers throw over three times in a row. Two and zero to Laduca. Randy using that. It's it's not even a slide step. It's no step. Kind of just uh, lets gravity take over as he throws. Almost like playing catch. And you wonder whether that affects his control. It's a pretty big breath for the fourth inning. He's not used to dealing with pesky things like base runners. <laughs> I mean, Doc Gooden never really learned how to hold runners on. Right. For years, he never had to. He'll just strike out the next two. What's the difference? Doesn't matter if he's at first or at third. <laughs> Reyes the tying run with two down. He's running. Ball three. Stinnett's throw is not in time. Fifteenth stolen base of the year for Reyes, and so he's in scoring position. What a nice job by Jose Reyes. Johnson throwing over, slide stepping, pitching out, doing everything he can to try to hold Reyes close. Still not successful. This one hop bounce. Cano had to make the play upstairs there, and it allowed Reyes to go underneath. 
Now it's 3 0 to Laduca with Beltron on deck. So a base hit could tie the game. Ball four. Third walk given up by Johnson. And whether the Mets get even in this inning or not, again, Randy gets the first two outs, but then has to work very hard building his pitch count even higher so that even if he gets through the inning, it's going to make it that much tougher on him. Well, you see he is taking some big breaths out there because when you have a pesky base runner on, it takes a lot out of you as a pitcher and sometimes takes your concentration away from the hitter. Beltron already has a three run homer tonight. Takes ball one. This was in the first inning with two on. And he clubbed one to the back of the bullpen in left field. And Beltron has six for 13 against Randy Johnson in his career. Ball two. Well, this is a situation as you see Delgado on deck that, you know, Johnson has been put in this position to try to pick up one of his teammates because. I mean he should be out of the inning in the major league level he should be able to execute a rundown two on and two out two and oh to Beltron two and one a pitch count for Randy Johnson now up to eighty five here in the fourth inning. Beltron now with 28 RBIs, one behind Delgado for the club lead. Fouls it at the plate. Reyes the tying run at second. Laduca at first with two down. 6 5 Yankees, bottom of the fourth. And this is only the first of six games between these two teams. We're in the fourth <laughs> inning, it's exhausting. <laughs> Oh, Willie Randolph, I bet, would love Darren Oliver to try to give him a couple of innings, try to get this game deeper. Well, the luxury that Willie has today is that he knows he has Pedro and Glavin the next two days. So he will use his whole bullpen if he has to to try and win this game tonight. 2 2 to Beltron. Hit in the air to left center field. Playable for Damon. And that ends the inning. So Randy Johnson works out of two out trouble in the fourth and carries a 6 5 lead into the fifth. Here's a Toyota line score. The Yankees with a 6 to 5 lead. They already have 11 hits, and Randy Johnson will take the turn at bat here in the fifth with already 87 pitches under his belt in four innings. Darren Oliver comes inside. I don't know if that's an answer to the inside pitch that Johnson threw Delgado, but the ball almost clipped him. If Randy exposes his pitching arm, left hand pitcher batting right handed, so he wears that elbow guard. Randy had an infield hit, ball that Reyes knocked down in the third. And Oliver strikes him out, one away. Second strikeout for Darren Oliver. The center fielder, Johnny Damon. One down and Johnny Damon, the batter. There was so much talk about Damon when he signed with the Yankees having to cut his hair. <laughs> I, I learned something about Johnny that I didn't know. That hair has always been something of an issue with him. Apparently when he was in junior high school he was a little bit rebellious and he shaved one side of his head completely and left the other side long <laughs> so that when he went to the caveman look with the Red Sox it that, that was mild <laughs> for was him. a step back. Yeah. Weak ground ball. Matsui has to hurry and he gets Damon who's still not running 100 percent and there are two away. The Mets Yankees game one
It's the series that divides families and brings them together. <laughs> And it's also friendly. Derek Jeter takes ball one. Jeter two for three. <laughs> single and a double. He scored two. He's driven in one. Typical Jeter night against the Mets. One and one to Derek. I've seen the one on the right before that. White. Yeah, I haven't seen that Mets either. Logo. Almost looks like a. Dodger hat Los Angeles Dodger hat with the New York Met emblem on it coexisting with the Yankee fans next to them and Matsui picks it off and Oliver has himself a one two three inning we've come halfway in game one at Shea six five Yankees Heading to the bottom of the fifth inning, Mets trailing the Yankees, 6-5 to five here at Shea Stadium. Chris Cotter along with Brooklyn native Alyssa Milano. How you doing? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here. We're literally like on the field right now. It's How big of a baseball fan are you? Huge. I grew up watching the Yankees on my dad's lap. So more of a Yankees fan than a Mets fan? I'm a Dodgers fan, so although I love the Mets, I feel a little guilty cheering for them. Because I feel, I feel like my seats at Dodger Stadium, they're going to know. Oh, you know? <laughs> I got you. Now, Charmed, you just finished uh, filming up not only the season finale, but the series finale. Is that right? Yeah, and it airs on Sunday. Yeah, after eight years. <laughs> that must be a strange feeling. Eight years, and then you're, you're, that's it. It's, it's a, a very weird dichotomy, because obviously, creatively, I was ready to move on. But it's really sad to say goodbye to all your friends and, you know, just break those habits of going to work every day. Now you started as an actress when you were what seven years of age. Yeah. <laughs> Our play by play man Gary Cohen started calling games at age seven. So you have that in common <laughs> wow. with him as well. That's awesome. <laughs> hey Carlos Delgado goes out on strikes. Right. David Wright uh, coming up to buy it. Now one final question for you. Who's the boss. That was a long running series and that finishes and then charmed a long running series and that finishes. It's almost like your whole life you've been doing these two series in television. What's up next for you. That's a really good question. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm taking the next six months and just going to try to figure it out. You know, I have a bunch of stuff in development that I'm working on, and I'm enjoying my time and my freedom, and we'll see what happens. You know, I think that sounds like a good idea. I'm going to take the next six months <laughs> and figure out what I'm going to do as well. Gary, Ron? Thank you very much, Chris. I feel so old. <laughs> <laughs> She's too young to have stuff in I, development, is she? I mean, really. Although I think that's... Hollywood talk. Tremendously talented. <laughs> she is. Right toward the right field line. Cabrero lets it drop in. And David Wright has his second hit, and the Mets have the tying run aboard. Well, this pitch is a good pitch by Randy Johnson. It's off the outside corner. Wright, though, with great plate coverage, hits it off the end of the bat, and Cabrera, who got a bad jump on it, wasn't able to get it. Look at that contact. Look at that head right on the ball. That's a picture perfect right there and a tough pitch from Johnson. So let's see if David Wright thinks about stealing a base. You got Nady at the plate who had a two run homer his last time up. Mets down 6 5 as they bat in the fifth. David has seven steals and eight tries this year. Doesn't have a very big lead. Nate hit his ninth home run of the year in the third inning to tie the game at five. Now has 22 runs batted in. 0 and 1 to Nate. Well, Wright's hit. The pitch from Johnson. You could see where the ball is. It's off the corner, but he's still able to cover that outside part, and I think that's really key for anyone who's hitting. You see a lot of hitters. They dig in the box, but they dig in where they make sure that that bat can cover the outside part. One and one. Oh, that's a strike. And Nady can't believe it, and frankly, neither can I. That's a bizarre strike. Well, that ball's definitely inside, but a good job by Kelly Stinnett of trying to keep that glove on the inside part, but that, as you saw, was inside. Well, we've seen Alfonso Marquez several times this year have a floating strike zone. So now Nady finds himself in an 0 2 hole. Oh, 
That was a great shot of Wright's eyes going back and forth. What they're doing sometimes is if you get on first base occasionally not only looking at Johnson but if you're in the mode where you're not going to run you can sometimes take a peek and see what the catcher is calling and you'll see a lot of base runners will do that because if they see a breaking ball call that would be a pitch it would be better for you to steal on than a fastball of course see him just looking in at the catcher's signs one and two to Nady. And then the job of the catcher is to make sure that he hides those signs but some do not. Well they use that catcher's mitt to shield the third base coach but it's a little harder to shield from the first base runner. And depending on the lights at a stadium some places the catchers have to give a bigger sign. And what I mean by that not a bigger sign but they have to kind of open their legs a little more to give so it's easier for the pitcher to see some uh, ballparks are very dark near the uh, the catcher as he squats down so. We'll watch Kelly Stanett and we'll see what as he looks to the bench for the signs and to give Randy Johnson one of the throw over to pitch out. He's got it now so now he knows what sign he's going to give. And he is Stanett's trying to hide them by pushing that right foot right knee in. Looking like he's very conscious of Wright trying to pick it up. Catchers are just great students of the game. They see things very quickly. That's why so many of them become managers. Nady keeps the at bat alive. There used to be a catcher that in day games when he didn't wear a sleeve you could see him giving a change up you could see his forearm rippling. So guys would look for different things like that. You know the change up of course is a sign wiggle your fingers sometimes that forearm if you're really muscular will wiggle also. Then that again going to the bench for signs. Fastball away. One and two to Nady. Goes with it. Cano runs it down. Two away. As Wright moves to second. Well, just didn't have enough juice to get through the infield. The second baseman. And now the tying run in scoring position with two down for Matt Suey. A hundred pitches for Randy Johnson and not yet through the fifth. Matsui is lined to left and flied to center. Kaz is hitting just 138 this year with runners in scoring position, looking to pick up right from second with two down. Another switch hitter, Valentin waits on deck. Matsui is a right hand batter, is now just two for 18 to start the season. So the numbers are working against him. 1-1. One, one. Willie Randolph thought about using Chris Woodward at second base tonight against the lefty, but Kaz had yesterday off, and he wanted to get him back in there today. That's Suey has a home run against Randy. He hit one last year. He takes out a couple of bodies in the Yankee dugout. Save yourself. <laughs> right at second and two down, six five Yankees, bottom of the fifth. Matsui pops it foul. We'll go out of play. Beltron and Delgado. Hoping Matsui can come through. 
That's where down four nothing and five to three. Now down six five. Joe Torre knows that he's going to have to use a lot of bullpen today. Willie Randolph already has. Two and two to Matsui. Randy Johnson five and four on the year but over his last four starts lugging around a seven point one seven ERA Aaron Heilman up early in the Mets bullpen pitcher spot two batters away Matsui takes inside ball three so after Johnson got ahead of him Kaz works the count full a walk would put two men on and bring up Valentin. Pedro Feliciano joining Heilman in the bullpen. 106 pitches for Johnson. 3 2 to Matsui. Toward the hole, base hit. Here comes Wright. And the Mets tie up the ball game. Kaz Matsui comes through with a game tying hit, and it's 6 to 6. Well, we talked about it before. Johnson having a hard time putting away hitters, even when he has two strikes on him, does not make the pitch on the 3 2 to Matsui. Matsui finds the hole, and we talked about the outfielders for the Yankees. They're probably not going to come close to throwing anyone out tonight. Certainly not Bernie Williams in left or Johnny Damon in center, both with substandard arms. So now the Mets have drawn even for a second time, and here's Valentin. We'll see if Matsui can swipe a base. A pitch out but he's not going. Kaz has just two steals this year but he certainly has the speed to steal bases. Valentin has walked and grounded out 0 for 1. The Yankee bullpen is still quiet. Johnson's given up six runs and eight hits in four and two thirds. And these have been tough innings for Johnson. These are not just five run of the mill innings. As you see, no one working down there for the Yankees. He's had guys on base. He's given up big hits. Gone 3 2 for many, hit, many of the hitters. It started poorly for Johnson. He had a 4 0 lead. Gave back three of the runs before recording an out. So he's been under duress. 2-0 to Valentin and that time it looked like he pushed the ball up to the plate pushed it up there and you saw the shot of Kaz Matsui he's trying to time Johnson trying to steal a base just he has he has nothing on his back leg you see how he's just kind of like this that would be look like the first toss you throw when you're trying to get warm when you're warming up 2-0 to Valentin bouncer to third knocked down no play fair ball. Rod boots it and the inning continues. Well, this ball right on the line comes up a little bit, but A Rod looking back thinks it was going to be foul, but hard for the umpire to make that call. He was between, A Rod's between the ball and the umpire. That's well, the home plate umpire's call since it didn't reach the bag. But it was a fair ball seventh error of the year for a rod and now Chris Woodward will bat for Darren Oliver with two on and two out and how far can Joe Torrey keep going with Johnson he finally gets somebody up in the bullpen but Randy's going to have to face at least one more batter Now that is the former Mets Scott Erickson up in the bullpen for the Yankees. Erickson's been a starting pitcher most of his career. It takes him a while to get ready. So here's Woodward with two on and two out. Game tied at six. And he takes a strike. And that's as crisp a pitch as Randy's thrown in this inning. Now if you're a pitching coach and watching Randy pitch right now, you can see that he's laboring. And he finds the inside corner again. It's 0-2. 94 mile an hour fastball and that's Randy Johnson really reaching back 
Well, one of his strengths, he's always been a great competitor trying to get the Yankees out of this inning. 0 oh, and 2 to Woodward, who's hitting 265. Check swing grounder. And Giambi makes the play, side retired. But the Mets get even on Kaz Matsui's two out RBI hit. It's 6 to 6 as we go to the sixth. We go to the sixth inning. Jason Giambi talking things over with Don Mattingly before he comes to bat against the new Met pitcher Aaron Heilman. Good game, huh? <laughs> huh, Derek? Having first fun? Baseman, Jason <laughs> this really has been some <laughs> ball game. Right from the first pitch. Well, Aaron Heilman in the game. If it's a battle of the bullpens as Scott Erickson continues to throw for the Yankees, then that advantage that you might have seen in the beginning of the game, Randy Johnson against Jeremy Gonzalez, maybe swings the Mets side with Heilman. Giambi leads off in the sixth inning in a tie game and takes the changeup for a strike. Heilman last worked on Tuesday night in St. Louis, working a perfect inning. This is now Aaron's 18th appearance of the year, working to a 1.69 ERA. Giambi fouls went off Laduco and two. The discussion re entered today. Omar Minaya saying that the Mets will sit down with the Brain Trust and consider every available option for their starting rotation as Scott Proctor gets up in the Yankee bullpen, including Pelfrey and including Aaron Heilman. But Willie Randolph reiterated tonight that he believes that Heilman best serves this club right where he is. And he strikes out Giambi with a changeup. One out and nobody on. Well, this is how Heilman gets out left handers. He has that good 94 mile an hour gas, but his pitch to get them out is that good changeup. This one 85 miles an hour, good movement, just running out of the strike zone. Hyundai hopes and heroes this season your tri-state Hyundai dealers and WB 11 team up to help kids strike out cancer every strikeout recorded by a Mets pitcher will add one hundred dollars to the hope and heroes children's cancer fund if you'd like to help call two one two three oh five fourteen twenty for more information six strikeouts tonight three for Gonzalez two for Oliver and now one for Howman Mets lead the National League in strikeouts a rod one for two and a walk. Caught looking by Oliver his last time up, much to his displeasure. Another change up from Heilman, 0 and 2. Well, good change up. This starts on the outside corner and goes straight down. You know, what he was talking about, Aaron Heilman, and he serves the club better in the bullpen just because of the. Ability to get right handers out, but also just so good against the lefties. It gives the Mets incredible depth in that bullpen with Juan Sanchez and Heilman setting up for Wagner. He has a little bit of an unusual three quarter delivery as you see this fastball. A good spin on it. One two to A Rod. Hit toward the gap in right center field and deep. Nady back at the wall. He makes the grab. Nady got a nice jump on that ball and that ball was not hit a very high trajectory at all but Nady was able to get back and get it. He did a great job of just running to the spot. He almost overran it as he snow coned it. But he did a good job of running to where he thought the ball was going to be looking up and he was there in plenty of time. So two out and nobody on and it brings up Kelly Stinnett up for the third time after taking over for. Jorge Posada who left with a tight back and Stinnett takes a strike and Stinnett is chipped in two for two and he drove in the go ahead run in the fourth inning. Mets then tied it in the bottom of the fifth on Kaz Matsui's two out hit and that's where we are six six in the sixth. Oh and two to Stinnett. I was saying that Thomas delivery that little three quarter delivery I think it's just it's great coming out of the pen that gives the batters a new place release point to look for and I think that's one of the advantages he has when he comes out of the pen. Met fans revving it up for Heilman. 0 2. 
Tapper. And Hyman with the long underhand toss. And he gets the Yankees one, two, three in the top of the sixth. We go to the bottom of the sixth at Shea, still tied at six. Let them know it's a good game. <laughs> this has been a wild affair. It was four to three after one, and both starting pitchers have now exited. Scott Proctor comes in to pitch for the Yankees. Well, Scott Proctor, 29 years old, came over from the Dodgers with Bubba Crosby for Robin Ventura. Scott Proctor, I got to watch him pitch on Saturday at Yankee Stadium. Very impressive, and they're very impressed with his work. Throws 94 to 95 miles an hour, good sharp slider, but throws strikes and is a tough kid, so you like him in these kind of situations. This season, the sixth inning means it's time to swing for sandwiches. If a man hits a home run this inning, you can log on to WB11.com for your chance to score a $100 gift card at Subway. Reyes takes a strike. Jose has been on twice tonight with a walk and a single. He's stolen a base. He scored a run and he even worked himself out of a rundown. Batting left handed for the first time tonight. Nothing in two to Reyes. Well, Randy Johnson's struggles continued tonight. As you look at the high fastball. Randy threw 113 pitches in five innings allowed six runs and eight hits three walks five strikeouts and two home runs His ERA now five point six two Paul LaDuca on deck and then Carlos Beltran here in the bottom of the sixth Belcher Reyes trying to catch up to that fastball from Proctor Proctor started his career as a Starting pitcher, but really it was only a two pitch pitcher better suited for relief. Very good this year for the Yankees. So it's a breaking ball, and Reyes stops the swing. Mike Everett with the call. One and two. Proctor last year had all sorts of trouble getting left hand hitters out. They hit 300 against him. Good job by Reyes. That's one of the pitches that always gives him trouble that breaking ball down and in. One two to Reyes pops it up foul that'll come out of play. One of the things that Reyes always works on is trying to step towards the pitcher. You can see his front foot it turns out. That means that his right hip's got to come out his right shoulder's got to come out. That's one of the things he always tries to work on stepping towards the pitcher trying to hit that ball up the middle. After a perfect first inning of work, hoping the Mets can get him a lead here in the sixth. Mets have not led tonight. They've come back twice to tie. And Reyes again lays off the breaking ball, two and two. Three and two. Well, how many tonight times tonight did we see Randy Johnson do this? Get ahead of a hitter and then be unable to slam the door on. I wonder what the Yankees do, even though they get behind the count, they will still work the pitcher and go deep in the count as Reyes has done. This will be the ninth pitch of the at bat to Reyes. Ball four. And Reyes walks for the second time tonight. This comes leading off the inning. And now the Mets have the go ahead run aboard. Nobody out, and Laduca coming up. And that's 18 walks for Reyes now. I think, to a certain extent, Reyes being asked to look at more pitches messed him up early in the season, but I think, Ronnie, he's getting the hang of it. I think he really is also. He's starting to, he looks, he just looks nice and quiet up there. He doesn't look jumpy or edgy. That's good to see. See if Proctor can hold him on. Reyes has already stolen one tonight, has 15 for the year. 
Last time he was aboard, Reyes was able to get out of this rundown when Cano forgot to throw the ball. Reyes subsequently stole second, but was stranded there. And Proctor keeping an eye on him. Loduca tonight has a bloop single and a walk. He's one for two, and he scored a run. Now he's hit seven straight games. Scott Proctor, who grew up right around the area where the Mets have spring training in Stewart, Florida, just south of Port St. Lucie. There goes Reyes. Loduca takes it high, and Stinnett's throw into the runner, and he got him. Great tag by Jeter. Well, Kelly Stinnett could not get a better pitch to throw on as Reyes slides. Jeter just gets him on top of the helmet. Fine play by Derek Jeter. See, catches the ball, just gets him on the shoulder and the helmet before Reyes gets to the bag. Now, it wasn't a perfect throw by Stinnett, but it was a perfect tag by Jeter. That's a great play. So one out and nobody on. Reyes is caught for the fifth time this year. And Leduca lifts one to center. Damon right there. Two away. So two out and nobody on. As we look at the JetBlue upcoming schedule. Day game tomorrow, night game Sunday. And we rejoin you Tuesday night when the Phillies come to town for the first of three. Wednesday night and Thursday afternoon as well. The Phillies, meanwhile, tonight are trailing the Red Sox 5-1 to one in the bottom of the seventh. Good news for the Mets. Not so good for the Yankees, who came in a half game behind Boston. Beltron breaks his bat and grounds one to Cano. And Proctor through the inning. So the caught stealing helps Proctor get through the sixth inning. We go to the seventh, still tied at six. Derek Jeter coming off the field after that last half inning. And being looked at by the trainer after extending that left arm to make the tag on Reyes. Well, just like Ricky Henderson, who's taught a lot to Reyes, those bodies come hurling in there, and you can you can jam your shoulder. As Cano takes a strike, but you're fully your body's just out there, and you make the tag. But Reyes is going so fast that it kind of bends your shoulder back, as you can see. Derek Jeter's arm go wailing. Cano has hit the ball hard three times in a row tonight. And it takes a strike from Heilman 0 and 2. Cano doubled to left center to drive in a run in the first, hit a 410 foot sacrifice fly in the third, then hit a bullet to center that Beltron caught in the fourth. Robinson Cano came up in early May last year. And he strikes out as Heilman gets him with the off speed pitch, one away. Well, that's a good changeup from Heilman. The different rotation you'll see on this changeup. See that circle grip, and it comes out and it's spinning as it goes straight down. That spin on it makes that ball go down and run away from the lefty. That one, though, stayed inside. So Heilman is face four and retired for. Here's Bernie Williams, who's two for three. Playing left field in the absence of Hideki Matsui. Takes a strike. The Yankees today put Bubba Crosby on the disabled list to join Matsui and Sheffield and they called up a journeyman minor leaguer Mitch Jones. The Yankee bench has really been depleted by all their injuries and in a close game in a National League ballpark that can really have an impact. Good change up by Howman. He's ahead on Williams 0 and 2. Well, you can see it coming out of his hand. He has that ball buried deep in his palm. And what you do is you throw it just like a fastball with that same motion. But because you have it jammed into your palm and the circle grip change, it takes all, puts a lot of spin on the ball that takes the speed off it and gives it movement. Ahead 0 and 2 to shortstop. Reyes in front of it. Throws out Williams 2 away. Five up, five retired by Aaron Heilman. You know, we we're talking about that circle change. There's a lot of different ways to throw it, but the way you grip it usually is you hold it like this, you make a circle with your thumb and forefinger, 
and you'd grip it real, real deep in your palm. Your fastball would be out here, so you have it on the tip of your fingers. C circle change is way back in your palm. When you let it go, it comes off your fingers like this, spinning. And as the spin takes off the speed, and makes a break. It's a great pitch. I could never learn it, but it was a great pitch. It's a very difficult pitch to master. Certainly is working for Aaron Heilman as he throws a fastball to Cabrera 1-0. Melky Cabrera one for two and an intentional walk. Pitcher Proctor for the moment has come out on deck. Change up popped up. Right retreats. Side retired. Aaron Heilman has come out of the bullpen and retired six Yankees in a row. Seventh inning stretch still tied at six. Ladies and gentlemen. Scott Proctor starts his second inning of work. Walked Reyes leading off the six, but he was caught stealing, and Proctor retired the next two. Now we'll take on Carlos Delgado. Jeter, okay, after hurting his shoulder on that tag of Reyes. Take a lot to get him out of the lineup. Especially now, <laughs> as shorthanded as the Yankees are. Delgado one for three, and he fouls one off. Nothing in one. Carlos Delgado started the night with more runs batted in interleague play than anybody else. 123 since interleague play began in 97. 1997, the Mets and Yankees met for the first time at Yankee Stadium on a June day, and it's a day that Met fans will never forget. As Dave Malicki pitched a complete game shutout, bounced weakly to Giambi. One away. Malicki struck out Derek Jeter to end that shutout with 20,000 Met fans screaming at Yankee Stadium as we look at the Major League scoreboard on the first day of interleague play. White Sox won their crosstown game with the Cubs. Tonight, the Indians have a win over the Pirates, their fourth straight win. Cincinnati leading Detroit in the ninth. Florida leading in the Citrus Series. In the I 70 Series, St. Louis and Kansas City tied up in the Beltway series Beltway. Baltimore leading in the eighth game of interest to the Mets and Yankees Red Sox up five three on the Phillies as they go to the eighth and Wright takes a breaking ball high one and oh what a story Detroit is you know seven straight coming into this game looks like they might be on the losing end of this but Jim Leland a lot of people said that Leland was done that he didn't have you know the fire that you needed anymore to manage well they got to take it back now because he does and he's got that team playing beautifully he's the Dick Vermeil of baseball. Lost the fire and got it back. He, he doesn't cry as much as Dick Vermeil, though. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Smokes more, too. <laughs> one and one to right, and he fouls it back. I'll tell you, when Leland was the manager, as we see Xavier and Nady in the on deck circle, manager of the Pittsburgh Pirates, I was playing for the Mets. He, he just respected him so much. If you saw him off the field, he would always come over, shake your hand, how you doing? Just a real personal, nice man. You really respected him because. How good a baseball man he was. Wright is two for three on the day, and he hits one foul. David is single twice and scored twice as we continue our look at the Toyota scoreboard. Texas leading Houston 2 1 in the fifth. Colorado Toronto. Now there's a natural rivalry. <laughs> of course, the Blue Jays lost their natural rival when Montreal moved to Washington. Proctor strikes out right with a high hard one two away first strike out for Scott Proctor. Well he throws high gas and if you throw that hard and the pitch is up there there's no way you're going to catch up to it. On the scoreboard there we're looking at Oakland against San Francisco Bonds is going to DH tonight four for twenty six since he hit his seven hundred thirteenth home run pressure even affects Barry Bonds. Here's Nady one for three but that one was a two run homer and he takes a strike this was in the third you and I were both surprised we didn't know he caught it this well thought it was going to be a fly ball to right field but some of those hitters when you hit that high fastball you get their reverse spin on it and just kept carrying one and one to Nady that one was almost as much of a surprise as the one Wilson Bedemid hit against Billy Wagner that went out a little bit more towards center field sometimes the ball here carries better than you expect. Nady fouls it off. I mean there are days early in the season when you can hit one 
that would go 900 feet in any other park that stays in but especially with a big crowd gets a little warmer ball does fly one two to Nady and Proctor misses high Mets were down four nothing Beltron hit a three run homer in the bottom of the first down five three Nady hit a two run homer in the third to tie Mets fell behind again and tied it on Matsui's hit in the fifth and he pops this one up Stinnett coming back side retired so Scott Proctor contributes a one two three inning Heilman and Proctor doing their jobs it's still six six we go to the eighth inning here at Shea pitching for the Yankees pitching has settled things down Scott Proctor for the Yankees Aaron Heilman for the Mets each contributing a couple of hitless innings and Heilman who's thrown only 18 pitches in his two innings will stay on for a third as Kevin Reese comes up to bat for Proctor. Dribbled back to Heilman. One pitch and one retired. So Heilman with just 19 pitches has retired seven batters. One out and nobody on. I think that's a good move also the way that Heilman's throwing. You just want to play the hot hand. So here's Damon let off the game with a double and scored. Since then he's popped up fly down and grounded out so he's one for four. The Yankees had 11 hits in the first four innings but they twice left the bases loaded. Remember the two big plays by Jose Reyes. Keeping that ball in the infield both times. I see Kyle Farnsworth warming up in the Yankees bullpen. Keeping both of those balls in the infield giving these pitchers another chance to get out of the inning and they both did. And Damon takes a strike one and one. Derek Jeter waiting on deck. One and two to Damon. Well if Aaron Heilman is in the discussion as far as joining the Mets rotation this is the kind of performance that reminds people why he's so valuable out of the bullpen. You have a starter go down early Oliver came in through a couple of good innings and now you have Heilman to get you into the eighth inning. Damon fouls it away. Talking to Omar Minaya earlier today he didn't say it. But it sounded just listening between the lines as though he is seriously considering bringing up Mike Pelfrey sooner rather than later. There are other options. Evan McLean young lefty who's doing well at Norfolk. Alay Soler who's a little older a Cuban pitcher pitching down at Binghamton. But they're seriously considering Pelfrey. Two and two to Damon. And the hope was that Jeremy Gonzalez would go out and give them a second straight solid start tonight. But that didn't happen. Which makes that back end of the rotation look that much shakier heading down the road. 2 2 to Damon. Ball three. By the way, the news on Brian Bannister today he had an MRI. It confirmed that the hamstring is not fully healed. So they're just going to send him to Florida and let him rest for a while. So it's going to be a while until Bannister's back. And Damon strikes out on the changeup. Aaron Heilman has been magnificent. That's his third strikeout. This week's Mets WB11 poll question is which New York team will have the better record? Well, 67% said Mets. 33% said Yanks. Log on to the WB11.com to vote on next week's poll. Well, here is Jeter. Tie game, eighth inning, two out and nobody on. Howman's retired eight in a row. And Jeter bunting one. How about that? Two out and nobody on? Trying to bunt, thinking that he'll get on, steal a base. Look at this change up to Johnny Damon, just way out in front, just took so much speed off it. And you have the ability to throw a 94 mile an hour fastball 
and come back with an 82 mile an hour change. It's just so hard for the hitters to sit on anything. Throws them both for strikes also. He's had a great change up tonight. One and one to Jeter. And as you can see, he can throw his changes to both sides of the plate. Outside to left handers as he did to Damon. And that time reached all the way out and got it on that outside part outside the strike zone to Jeter outside. Well, another change up inside. Check that. That was a fastball inside, not a changeup. One and two to Jeter. Changeup misses two and two. Six to six. Keep the kids up late. <laughs> Fifty six thousand plus roaring. And Jeter stays alive. Fifty six thousand two hundred and eighty nine. They're packed into every crevice. It took a lot of people a long time to get to the ballpark tonight. But it's been worth every minute. Two two to Jeter. Fouls another one off. The shortstop. G Reyes throws low. Scoop by Delgado. Side retired. Delgado saves Reyes an error. Heilman retires nine in a row, and it's still six to six. Billy Wagner getting ready in the Mets bullpen to pitch the ninth, hoping the Mets can get him a lead in the bottom of the eighth against Kyle Farnsworth. Well, Kyle Farnsworth last appearance is a perfect inning and a win versus Texas. Kyle Farnsworth, another hard thrower from the right side. Proctor reached 97 miles an hour in his fastball. Farnsworth has the ability to do that also. Pitched with Atlanta last year. Did a great job getting 10 saves down the stretch for the Braves. Did a great job until his last appearance in game four of the division series when he melted down in the ninth inning. And the Astros went on to win in 18 in a record setting game. Kaz Matsui leads off in the bottom of the eighth. One for three drove in the tying run and he drags a butt. Farnsworth though off the mound throws him out one away. Good idea by Matsui but he couldn't get it past the pitcher. One out. It'll bring up Jose Valentin. Valentin 0 for 2 but he's been on base twice on a walk and an air. You know talking about Kyle Farnsworth and how hard he throws it. It brings this to mind. How many times in his career do you think that Randy Johnson has pitched in a game where he's the third hardest thrower to pitch in the game for his own team. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Never. I mean Randy these days is throwing 94 95 tops you had Proctor throwing 97 you got Farnsworth who can throw a 98 99. Just threw a 96 mile an hour fastball for a strike. Barnesworth signed a three year deal with the Yankees in the offseason. And Valentin can't hold up 0 2. A slider from Barnesworth. Well, you have to be so aware of how hard Barnesworth throws that that slider, you'll find a lot of guys check swinging on that good slider down and in. As you see Cliff Floyd coming out to pinch hit. Aaron Heilman did a great job in relief. Now the Mets trying to get him a win. 
The starting pitchers didn't have it today on either side. Jeremy Gonzalez got chased after three innings plus. Randy Johnson slogged through five, but the bullpens have been great. As the lefty specialist Mike Myers gets up for the Yankees with Floyd standing on deck. One two to Valentin. 97 mile an hour fastball two and two. Now you can't be any better than Aaron Hammond was tonight. Three perfect innings when the Mets really needed it. Valentin fouls went off and only one hard hit ball against Hammond and that's the one that Nady caught against a rod in the sixth. Aaron may not like his role but he's doing a great great job in it. He's great at it. Two and two to Valentin. And he keeps the bat alive. Well, Valentin just looks like a different hitter right now. He really does. Falling off. Those are nasty pitches he's falling off in Farnsworth, especially when you have to be ready for the fastball. But this was the kind of offensive player he was for many years. Two two on the way and Valentin lifts another one foul. And Valentin has seven hits in his last 15 at bats and has driven in seven runs over that span so. He has all of a sudden found his groove after a long long time without it. And now the key is to keep it. got to give Willie Randolph a lot of credit and his staff for being patient with Valentin and knowing that he was going to turn it around. He pops this one up. Shallow right center. Damon taking charge. Two away. So two out and nobody on. As we check the Jeep game summary, Mets have been down for most of the night. Four nothing, five to three, six to five, but they've come back each time. Beltron and Nady with home runs. Robinson Cano has had a big night for the Yankees. And now Cliff Floyd will come up as a pinch hitter and he gets a rousing ovation from Met fans. Despite the 2 2 batting average. Trying to be a game changer in the eighth. And he takes a slider from Farnsworth. Cliff sitting today against the lefty for the third time in a week. Has three hits in nine career at bats against Farnsworth, whom Joe Torrey leaves in with Mike Myers ready. One and one. You have to imagine if the Mets had gotten anybody on in front of Floyd that we would have seen Myers in the game. Myers is almost impossible for lefties to hit. Cliff has three home runs this year. Lays off two and one. We saw David Ortiz hit a home run in Philadelphia. Mike Myers was acquired by the Yankees to get Ortiz out during those pressure packed games between the Red Sox and the Yankees. First time he faced him, though, Big Poppy took him deep. Cliff didn't start tonight because he's 0 for his last 17 against lefties and. So Joe Torrey rolling the dice a little bit by leaving Farnsworth in the game. This is the kind of pitcher that Cliff likes to hit. 2 1 on the way. To throws a slider and he takes it for a strike. So Farnsworth staying away from the fastballs against Floyd. As Joe Torrey and Ron Guidry talk about the decision making here. Six to six, bottom of the eighth. Two two to Floyd. Fouled away. Xavier Nady with a home run tonight. Carlos Beltran with a home run tonight. And Willie Randolph hoping for some late inning magic after the Mets 
had to battle from behind through the first half of this game. And Floyd swings and hits one in the air to left. Bernie Williams right there. And Farnsworth pitches a 1 2 3 bottom of the eighth. We go to the ninth. Billy Wagner coming on. Game tied at six. Ninth inning at Shea. Billy Wagner on to try and keep the game tied. A week from Sunday at one. Join us back here on the WB 11 as the Mets head to Florida for a battle with the Marlins. Don't miss an inning. There's Mo. Mariano Rivera getting loose. Now the question is would Joe Torre bring Rivera into a tie game on the road. Wagner trying to keep it a tie game the outings have been very spaced out for Billy lately. As Giambi takes outside Wagner's only been in two games in the last two weeks. Most recently last Saturday night in Milwaukee. When he earned his eighth save of the year. One and one to Giambi. Giambi's walk been hit by a pitch and struck out twice over two. This is almost a contest with one of those pitching booths. Everyone that comes in is trying to throw harder than the next. Proctor then Farnsworth and now the Mets counter with Wagner. And a slider for a strike one and two. Well Aaron Heilman was perfect for three innings. Perfect pitch full Giambi right on the corner. Now Wagner ahead one and two on Giambi. Struck him out. Got him with a slider one away. Well between Oliver Heilman and Wagner. That is 14 Yankees retired in a row. Now here's a rod. 0 for 5 in his career against Billy Wagner. 1 for 3 in a walk tonight. One out top of the ninth. Slider misses. And he fouls off the fastball 1 and 1. Where you got to pitch a rod down. Anything up in the strike zone, very dangerous. A rod has nine home runs this year, which for him constitutes a slow start. <laughs> Last year's American League MVP. Second time he won the award. And the slider in for a strike, one and two. Really has a good feel so far for his slider. When you're warming up in the pen, sometimes you'll say, hey, that's the pitch I'm going to use tonight. Ahead on A Rod, one and two. Struck him out. Billy Wagner strikes out Giambi and Rodriguez back to back, two out and nobody on. Well, after going inside with sliders and fastballs, Wagner just pinpoints this fastball right on the corner. A Rod swinging through it. Now here's Kelly Stinnett as Rivera starts to loosen, and Stinnett takes a slider up high. Remember, Stinnett came on back in the second inning when Jorge Posada's back stiffened up on him, and Kelly's gone two for three and driven in a run. Change up from Wagner, one and one. Next telecast on the WB 11 a week from Sunday at one o'clock Mets and Marlins down in Florida. Fastball strike and Wagner ahead on Stinnett one and two. Fifty six thousand two hundred and eighty nine the seventh largest crowd in Shea Stadium history. Struck him out. Wagner strikes out the side of the top of the ninth. To the bottom of the ninth we go six to six. Well Joe Torre brings in his closer in a tie game on the road. 
as Mariano Rivera comes on to pitch in the bottom of the ninth. The defensive gem of the game is brought to you by the latest offers from Chevrolet. And good play by Derek Jeter, Stanette and Jeter on this play. Stanette doing the job after Jorge Posada left because of injury, and now Rivera. And I'm a little surprised by this. Are you, Ron? I am surprised. Usually Joe Torre would not bring him in on the road unless they were winning. The problem is, is both the Mets and the Yankees have had a hard time getting to their closers. So haven't got as much work as they'd like him to have. His last appearance was a perfect ninth inning for a save against Texas. Mets have occasionally been able to hit Rivera. There was the Matt Franco game winning hit in 99. There was a Jay Payton three run homer in game two of the World Series. But hey Rivera is the best there's ever been. He's given up more hits than innings pitched so far this year. Mets of the top of the batting order up in the bottom of the ninth. And Reyes bluffs a button takes the cutter inside. Reyes has been on base three times tonight with two walks. And a single. He's stolen a base. He's also been caught once. Well, there's no secrets to Mariano Rivera to New York fans. They've seen him pitch in October so many times. Cutters in, fastballs in. And it's 2 0 to Reyes. Joe Torre double switched Rivera into the game. He brought in Miguel Cairo, the former Met, to play first base. So Cairo's batting ninth. And Rivera third as he tries to get, if necessary, two innings out of Rivera. To Otto Reyes, and he takes a strike. It is never ceasing to amaze me that Rivera can survive throwing one pitch. Throws it over and over again. Looped near the bag, and Jeter's there. One away. You ask hitters, though, they say you cannot. Pick up the rotation on the ball. It comes out of his hand, and it, the, the life that he has on that cutter, it just bores in on the hitters so quickly, so late, with just a little bit of movement. Here's Paul Oduka. The Mets have gotten good news on the scoreboard, bad news for the Yankees. Red Sox have beaten the Phillies 5 to 3. The Yankees began the day a half game behind the Red Sox. The Mets began the day two games in front of the Phillies, who've now lost four in a row. So the Mets with a chance to open up a three game lead if they can win this one. Here's Loduca and he takes a strike. That's what I'm talking about just a puts a pressure you can see it coming off his middle finger. Little tiny spin probably a little six inch break maybe. At 94 miles an hour. Loduca one for three and a walk tonight. And he fouls off the cutter 0 and 2. What I mean by he comes off his middle finger. That's where he puts all the pressure. And that pressure from the middle finger just makes that ball dart out to that outside corner. And it's got to be even tougher for a guy like Loduca who's seeing Rivera for the first time. You just can't judge that cutter off video. Well, he'll do enough inside the right handers, too. And he comes in and nearly hits Loduca. One and two. Good job by Luduka getting out of the way of this fastball that ran in. That's not the cutter. That's the fastball that he has two seams. It runs in on the right hander, and then usually after that pitch, he'll go back to the cutter outside. Stanet wants it in again. One more pitch in. Ripped down the left field line. That's an extra base hit for Luduka. Paul Laduca with a one out double in the bottom of the ninth and the Mets have the potential winning run at second base. Well they tried to double up inside on Laduca. But this ball comes a little bit back over the middle of the plate. Laduca had the ability to pull those arms in and keep that ball fair. How good has this guy been in the late innings of close games? Well he's great all game long but he's even better when the pressure's on the line. We talked about Jeter. And his intangibles. How about Paul LaDuca? The stats, you look at his stats and it won't drive you crazy. But he is 
excellent player and a great acquisition for the Mets. Mets are a base hit away from winning it. Beltron takes a strike. Carlos is three for ten in his career against Rivera. Keep in mind the arms in the Yankee outfield. Williams in left. Damon in center. Neither one of them can throw a lick. But you've also got a slow man at second in Laduca with Delgado to hit next. Beltron bounces it foul 0 and 2. Carlos with a three run homer back in the first inning is now driven in 28 runs one behind Delgado for the club lead. Six six last of the ninth. Well he had a good cut at this pitch. But Carlos Beltran does not get in it's up over the plate just where Stanette wanted it. Into your living room. Ooh. Rock your world. <laughs> oh, and two to Beltron. Struck him out. Rivera with a cutter fans Beltron for the second out. Two away. Well, this one down. See the bottom drop out. Swinging over the top is Beltran. Usually you expect that ball to be about waist level, but that one he got on top. Now it looks like the Yankees are going to walk Delgado, and this makes perfect sense because Delgado has as good numbers against Mariano Rivera as anybody. Seven for 18, that's a 389 average. And so they'll walk Delgado and bring up David Wright. Willie Randolph hoping that the Mets can come through in their final turn at bat. They trailed by four runs before they ever came to bat tonight. But Randy Johnson didn't do much for Joe Torre. The bullpens have been magnificent. And now David Wright will come to the plate with another ninth inning chance. He wanted to have one back the other night in St. Louis. When he batted with the bases loaded against Jason Isringhausen with the Mets down by a run. Now he comes up with a chance to win it. Well on the edge of the seats are the Met fans tonight. Laduca has got to really work at second base too to get a good jump. Good walking lead. As he will be sent on any base hit just about any base hit. Two on and two out. Last of the ninth. Mets six, Yankees six. Laduca representing the winning run. Wright is two for four tonight. Ball one. Johnny Damon not very deep in center field, and he just can't afford to play much deeper. Anything hit over his head, the game's over, but he's got to give himself a chance on a base hit. One and one. Good pitch from Rivera. This ball is down. Foul tipped by Wright. One and one to David Wright. Fouled away. And now Rivera one strike away from getting out of a jam. Xavier Nady on deck. Wright has had two career at bats against Rivera still looking for his first hit. A seat squirmer at Shea. One two to right. Two and two. And you've got to do that with Wright. You've got to bust him in. It'll be interesting to see what Rivera does this time. On Laduca, he threw one inside, knocked him off the plate, and came back in. Will he do that again or go back outside with that cutter? 2-2 Two -two to right. Into the air to center field. Damon going back to the warning track. It's over his head, and the Mets win it. David Wright with a walk-off hit. 
from the bottom of the ninth off Mariano Rivera, and the Mets have taken game one from the Yankees, 7-6. Well, great hit, redemption for right for the other night in St. Louis. And we talked about, well, you talked about, Gary, Johnny Damon playing shallow because he doesn't have that good of an arm, but he wasn't able to go back on the ball as well because he has that sore foot. Both things lead to a hit for the Mets and a win. A tremendous win for the Mets tonight as Paul LaDuca races home with a winning run on David White's walk-off hit. Second walk-off hit for Wright this season. And the Mets win it 7-6. to six. Chris Cotter standing by with David Wright. Chris? All right, thanks, Gary. David, what makes Rivera so tough to hit? I mean, he's got that hard cutter. He's uh, He's got, like, a little two-seamer that he can throw in on you. I mean, he just throws everything so hard with a lot of late movement. You just have to try to go up there and make contact. I was fortunate to get a pitch over the plate, put a good swing on it. With this type of environment, how electric was it? And how did it feel to get that the ball off the bat like that? Uh, as soon as off the bat, you know, you hit a flush. You just know that, you know, Johnny's a great center fielder out there. You just hope that I got enough of it. And uh, fortunately, they were playing a little shallow to cut that run off at a uh, home plate, and I uh, got enough of it. Did you think you got enough of it when you hit it? I was hoping. <laughs> I was hoping, and I crossed my fingers. Uh, but, uh, you know, it was an electric crowd tonight, and it was, uh, you know, great to come through like that. How great was this bullpen on a night like tonight to keep you guys in it? Uh, huge. Huge. Uh, you know, both Ali and Aaron Hallman come in and uh, did a fantastic job, and they really kept us in this game. It seemed like every time, you know, they scored a run, we had an answer right back for them, and that's the kind of team we got this year. All right, congratulations, David. Thanks, Chris. All right, Gary. Well, the New York Mets bullpen retired the last 16 Yankees who came to the plate, and that set the stage for David Wright to be a hero tonight as he hit one over Damon's head, and the Mets win it 7-6. to six. Back to Shea in a moment.